In mathematics, the limit of a function is a fundamental concept in calculus and analysis concerning the behavior of that function near a particular input. Formal definitions, first devised in the early 19th century, are given below. Informally, a function f assigns an output f to every input x. We say the function has a limit l at an input p. This means f gets closer and closer to l as x moves closer and closer to p. More specifically, when f is applied to any input sufficiently close to p, the output value is forced arbitrarily close to l. On the other hand, if some inputs very close to p are taken to outputs that stay a fixed distance apart, we say the limit does not exist. The notion of a limit has many applications in modern calculus. In particular, the many definitions of continuity employ the limit. Roughly, a function is continuous if all of its limits agree with the values of the function. It also appears in the definition of the derivative. In the calculus of one variable, this is the limiting value of the slope of secant lines to the graph of a function. History Although implicit in the development of calculus of the 17th and 18th centuries, the modern idea of the limit of a function goes back to Bowles Arno who, in 1817, introduced the basics of the epsilon delta technique to define continuous functions. However, his work was not known during his lifetime. Cauchy discussed variable quantities, infinitesimals, and limits in defined continuity by saying that an infinitesimal change in x necessarily produces an infinitesimal change in y in his 1821 book, Cause de Analyse, while claims that he only gave a verbal definition. Weir's Trass first introduced the epsilon delta definition of limit in the form it is usually written today. He also introduced the notations lim and limxx0. The modern notation of placing the arrow below the limit symbol is due to Hardy in his book A Course of Pure Mathematics in 1908. Motivation. Imagine a person walking over a landscape represented by the graph of y equals f. Her horizontal position is measured by the value of x, much like the position given by a map of the land or by a global positioning system. Her altitude is given by the coordinate y. She is walking towards the horizontal position given by x equals p. As she gets closer and closer to it, she notices that her altitude approaches L. If asked about the altitude of x equals p, she would then answer L. What, then, does it mean to say that her altitude approaches L? It means that her altitude gets nearer and nearer to L except for a possible small error in accuracy. For example, suppose we set a particular accuracy goal for our traveler. She must get within 10 meters of L. She reports back that indeed she can get within 10 meters of L, since she notes that when she is within 50 horizontal meters of P, her altitude is always 10 meters or less from L. The accuracy goal is then changed. Can she get within one vertical meter? Yes. If she is anywhere within 7 horizontal meters of P, then her altitude always remains within 1 meter from the target L. In summary, to say that the traveler's altitude approaches L as her horizontal position approaches P means that for every target accuracy goal, however small it may be, there is some neighborhood of P whose altitude fulfills that accuracy goal. The initial informal statement can now be explicated. The limit of a function f as x approaches p is a number l with the following property. Given any target distance from l, there is a distance from p within which the values of f remain within the target distance. This explicit statement is quite close to the formal definition of the limit of a function with values in a topological space. To say that means that f can be made as close as desired to l by making x close enough but not equal to p. The following definitions definitions are the generally accepted ones for the limit of a function in various contexts. Functions of a single variable. Suppose f, r r is defined on the real line and p, l r. It is said the limit of f, as x approaches p, is l and written if the following property holds. 
For every real epsilon greater than zero, there exists a real delta greater than zero such that for all real x, zero less than x minus p less than delta implies f minus l less than epsilon. The value of the limit does not depend on the value of f, nor even that p be in the domain of f. A more general definition applies for functions defined on subsets of the real line. Let be an open interval in R, and p a point if. Let f be a real valued function defined on all of except possibly at p itself. It is then said that the limit of f, as x approaches p, is l if, for every real epsilon greater than zero, there exists a real delta greater than zero such that zero less than x minus p less than delta and x implies f minus l less than epsilon. Here again the limit does not depend on f being well defined. The letters epsilon and delta can be understood as error and distance, and in fact Corti used epsilon as an abbreviation for error in some of his work. Though in his definition of continuity he used an infinitesimal rather than either epsilon or delta. As discussed below this definition also works for functions in a more general context. The idea that delta and epsilon represent distances helps suggest these generalizations. Existence and one-sided limits alternatively x may approach p from above or below, in which case the limits may be written as or respectively. If these limits exist at p and are equal there, then this can be referred to as the limit of f at p. If the one-sided limits exist at p but are unequal, there is no limit at p. If either one-sided limit does not exist at p, the limit at p does not exist. A formal definition is as follows. The limit of f as x approaches p from above is l if, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that f minus l less than epsilon whenever zero less than x minus p less than delta. The limit of f as x approaches p from below is l if, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that f minus l less than epsilon whenever zero less less than p minus x less than delta. If the limit does not exist then the oscillation of f at p is non-zero. More general subsets apart from open intervals, limits can be defined for functions on arbitrary subsets of R, as follows. Let f be a real valued function defined on a subset S of the real line. Let p be a limit point of S, that is, p is the limit of some sequence of distinct elements if the limit of f, as x approaches p from values in, is L if, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that zero less than x minus p less than delta and xs implies f minus l less than epsilon. This limit is often written the condition that f be defined on s is that s be a subset of the domain of f. This generalization includes as special cases limits on an interval as well as left-handed limits of real valued functions and right-handed limits. Deleted versus non-deleted limits The definition of limit given here does not depend on how f is defined at p. Bartle refers to this as a deleted limit because it excludes the value of f at p. The corresponding non-deleted limit does depend on the value of f at p if p is in the domain of f. A number l is the non-deleted limit of f as x approaches p if, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that x minus p less than delta and x dm implies f minus l less than epsilon. The definition is the same, except that the neighborhood x minus p less than delta now includes the point p, in contrast to the neighborhood 0 less than x minus p less than delta. Bartle notes that although by limit, some authors do mean this non-deleted limit, deleted limits are the most popular. For example, Apostol, Courant, Hardy, Rudin, Whitaker and Watson all by limit mean the deleted version. Examples non-existence of one-sided limit The function has no limit it, but has a limit at every other x-coordinate. The function has no limit at any x-coordinate. 
non-equality of one-sided limits the function has a limit at every non-zero x-coordinate. The limit at x equals zero does not exist. Limits at only one point the function only has a limit at x equals zero. The limit equals zero. The function only has a limit at x equals zero. The limit equals zero. Limits at countably many points the function has a limit at any x coordinate of the form where n is any integer. Functions on metric spaces. Suppose M and N are subsets of metric spaces A and B, respectively, and F, M, N is defined between M and N, with X, M, P, A limit point of M and L, N. It is said that the limit of F is X approaches P is L and right if the following property holds. For every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that db l less than epsilon whenever zero less than da less than delta. Again, note that p need not be in the domain of f, nor does l need to be in the range of f, and even if f is defined it need not be equal to l. An alternative definition using the concept of neighborhood is as follows. If, for every neighborhood V of L in B, there exists a neighborhood U of P in A such that F V functions on topological spaces, suppose X, Y are topological spaces with Y A Hausdorff space, let P be a limit point of omega X and L Y, for a function F. Omega y, it is said that the limit of f is x approaches p is ll as x p, and right if the following property holds. For every open neighborhood v of l, there exists an open neighborhood u of p such that f v. This last part of the definition can also be phrased there exists an open punctured neighborhood U of P such that F V. Note that the domain of F does not need to contain P. If it does, then the value of F at P is irrelevant to the definition of the limit. In particular, if the domain of F is X minus P, then the limit of F as X P exists and is equal to L if, for all subsets omega of X with limit point P. The limit of the restriction of f to omega exists and is equal to L. Sometimes this criterion is used to establish the non-existence of the two-sided limit of a function on R by showing that the one-sided limits either fail to exist or do not agree. Such a view is fundamental in the field of general topology where limits and continuity at a point are defined in terms of special families of subsets, called filters, or generalized sequences known as nets. Alternatively, the requirement that Y be a Hausdorff space can be relaxed to the assumption that Y be a general topological space, but then the limit of a function may not be unique. In particular, one can no longer talk about the limit of a function at her point, but rather a limit or the set of limits at a point. A function is continuous in a limit point P of an in its domain if and only if F is the limit of F as X tends to P. Limits involving infinity. Limits at infinity for F a real function, the limit of F is X approaches infinity as L, denoted means that for all, there exists C such that whenever X greater than C, or, symbolically, similarly, the limit of F is X approaches negative infinity as L, denoted means that for all there exists C such that whenever X less than C, or, symbolically, for example infinite limits limits can also have infinite values. When infinities are not considered legitimate values, which is standard, a formalist will insist upon various circumlocutions. For example, rather than say that a limit is infinity, the proper thing is to say that the function diverges or grows without bound. In particular, the following informal example of how to pronounce the notation is arguably inappropriate in the classroom. In any case, for example the limit of f is x approaches a is infinity, denoted means that for all there exists such that whenever these ideas can be combined in a natural way to produce definitions for different combinations. Such as for example limits involving infinity are connected with the concept of asymptotes. 
These notions of a limit attempt to provide a metric space interpretation to limits at infinity. However, note that these notions of a limit are consistent with the topological space definition of limit if a neighborhood of minus infinity is defined to contain an interval minus infinity. C. For some CR, a neighborhood of infinity is defined to contain an interval to cover all the cases. As presented above, for a completely rigorous account, we would need to consider 15 separate cases for each combination of infinities. There are also noteworthy pitfalls. For example, when working with the extended real line, does not possess a central limit. In contrast, when working with the projective real line, infinities are unsigned, so, the central limit does exist in that context. In fact there are a plethora of conflicting formal systems in use. In certain applications of numerical differentiation and integration, it is, for example, convenient to have signed zeros. A simple reason has to do with the converse if, namely, it is convenient for to be considered true. Such zeros can be seen as an approximation to infinitesimals. Limits at infinity for rational functions There are three basic rules for evaluating limits at infinity for a rational function f equals p, q. If the degree of p is greater than the degree of q, then the limit is positive or negative infinity depending on the signs of the leading coefficients. If the degree of p and q are equal, the limit is the leading coefficient of p divided by the leading coefficient of q. If the degree of p is less than the degree of q, the limit is zero. If the limit at infinity exists, it represents a horizontal asymptote at y equals l. Polynomials do not have horizontal asymptotes. Such asymptotes may however occur with rational functions. Functions of more than one variable by noting that x minus p represents a distance, the definition of a limit can be extended to functions of more than one variable. In the case of a function f, our 2r, if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all with 0 less than, minus, less than delta, then, f minus l, less than epsilon where, minus, represents the Euclidean distance. This can be extended to any number of variables. Sequential limits. Let f, x, y be a mapping from a topological space x into a Hausdorff space y, p, x and l, y. The sequential limit of f as x, p is l if, for every sequence in x minus p, which converges to p, the sequence f converges to l. If l is the limit of f as x approaches p, then it is a sequential limit as well. However, the converse need not hold in general. If in addition x is metrizable, then l is the sequential limit of f as x approaches p if and only if it is the limit of f as x approaches p. Other characterizations. In terms of sequences for functions on the real line, one way to define the limit of a function is in terms of the limit of sequences. In this setting, if and only if for all sequences converging to the sequence converges to, it was shown by Sierpinski in 1916 that proving the equivalence of this definition and the definition above, requires and is equivalent to a weak form of the axiom of choice. Note that defining what it means for a sequence to converge to requires the epsilon, delta method. Similarly as it was the case of Weierstrass's definition, a more general Heine definition applies to functions defined on subsets of the real line. Let f be a real-valued function with the domain dm. Let to be the limit of a sequence of elements of dm. Then the limit of f is l as x approaches p if for every sequence dm, a, that converges to a, the sequence converges to. This is the same as the definition of a sequential limit in the preceding section obtained by regarding the subset dm of R as a metric space with the induced metric. In non-standard calculus In non-standard calculus the limit of a function is defined by if and only if for all is infinitesimal whenever is infinitesimal. Here are the hyperreal numbers and is the natural extension of f to the non-standard real numbers. Keisler proved that such a hyperreal definition of limit reduces the quantifier complexity by two quantifiers.
On the other hand, HRBACEK writes that for the definitions to be valid for all hyperreal numbers they must implicitly be grounded in the epsilon delta method, and claims that, from the pedagogical point of view, the hope that non-standard calculus could be done without epsilon delta methods cannot be realized in full. Blash Chikal detail the usefulness of microcontinuity in developing a transparent definition of uniform continuity, and characterize H.R. Basak's criticism as of dubious lament. In terms of nearness at the 1908 International Congress of Mathematics F. Rees introduced an alternate way defining limits and continuity in concept called nearness. A point is defined to be near a set of for every there is a point so that in this setting the if and only if for all is near whenever is near. Here is the set. This definition can also be extended to metric and topological spaces. Relationship to continuity. The notion of the limit of a function is very closely related to the concept of continuity. A function f is said to be continuous at c if it is both defined at c and its value at c equals the limit of f as x approaches c.